What's up, buddy? Today I'm visiting a store called Estate Treasures in Middletown, Connecticut. Now because of the size of this store, I have to make this the only thrift store for this video. And believe me, it's more than enough. The building this shop uses was built between 1871 and 1874 and was a factory that processed raw silk into various kinds of thread. I had always thought that this shop only used the first floor and I found out on this day that they also used the second and third floors. But those floors are mostly just furniture. So most of this is recorded on the first floor. Throughout my life, I've never seen colored vinyls. Lately, I found many in these thrift stores. It's so cool, but too bad that it's albums I don't care about. I really got into Belafonte after getting addicted to the song Deo in the movie Beetlejuice. You remember this show? This is where Bruce Willis got a start. When I was young, this hippie stuff was dying out, but it still brings me back just to see it again. Kids passed around Richard Pryor albums like it was a drug back in my school days. This guy was hilarious. Rest in peace, Pryor. This is one of those slide projectors. But look at these small LPs just tossed into this bin like this. Hopefully most of them still play. And look at this. This shouldn't bring me back, but it does. I think my very first pack of cigarettes came from one of these. These old clunky pulleys. Remember these old logos of cigarettes back in the days? Is Kent even around anymore? Despite all the old people things that are found here, there is plenty of old video games. A couple of Xboxes and I think a 360. Good system though, I liked it a lot. Lots of extra controllers. I swear I find these at every thrift store. A few PS1, lots of PS2 games. Mostly sports, some PS3, and a few Wii games. Now I thought I struck gold here, like buying this wallet and all the games being included in the price. But each had a price tag, so no luck. But there was some good oldies in here. And the famous Atari 2600, once again enjoying the clunking of the cartridges. This game got so much recognition a long time ago, but I knew of nobody that played it. These boxes are in great condition. Exile, the missed sequel. I don't think Microsoft publishes these games anymore. Watch out buddy, here comes the future. <laughs> yep, that's right, virtual ping pong. Look at this futuristic virtual reality. So real, this girl has to get dressed up to play an indoor sport on a TV. At least they tried. I didn't use 8-tracks very much, but they were still popular when I was really young. Can't believe people use these in their car. But these eventually won. Man, this album was huge, and I still listen to it, and it still brings me back to my high school days. Want a broken radio for $25? Remember hauling these small TVs into your bedroom so you can play video games into the wee hours of the morning? Still like this wood grain design. And some having these front ports, making it easy to hook up your game systems. I don't know what price they're asking for this, but it looks to me like it's going to be used for parts. This has to be the most unusual keyboard I've seen in a long time. I didn't get it, but I might head back and pick it up. Why is this old monitor so expensive? Karaoke and guns. That's the life. Old fashioned watering cans. and for some reason old license plates. I used to love the realism and the effort put into these model cars. Just like American cars, they were built with quality and real metal. And for some reason, model train sets were far more realistic than they are now. 
Hell, we even used to get electrocuted playing with them. Here's some nice old cars still in their box. Awesome. Make an offer for this classic piece with a creepy clown. As inconvenient as these were, I would like to say I don't miss these old phones, but yeah, I do. The sound of the buttons and the dials, too good. These books might be before my time, but there's something about them that I like. E-books or not, I can't see how somebody would not want these, just for the vintage feel. Man, I grew up on the shoreline and everybody I knew had to have one of these. I kind of wish that I had one. You see a piano and you have to give it a test. Before there were Walkmans, these was our portable tape cassette players. Remember when everybody seemed to have the rights to make Three Stooges videos? I love old-fashioned chests. They always seem to show wear. They never seem to break. And you can kind of get a sense of the people who owned it before. If somebody told me that they've seen one of these at a thrift store, I would never believe them. It even has the lift to help get the patients out of the bed. Remember having to reset these oven clocks every time there was a blackout? Another Bella. I hope when I get my very first place, I get a fireplace and get a classic Bella just like this one. Looks like a comfortable massage chair, though he wouldn't be able to do much else since this huge plug would take up the entire outlet. These old clocks were so common, and shutting off the alarm with this tiny switch was a real pain. Man, these web TV things were so popular at one point. Oh yeah, they also have laser discs. Though I never had a laser disc player, and never knew anybody that did. A Remington noiseless typewriter. And actually, it was. This is a pretty good looking boot scraper. Though a little weird. I don't know if this is worth anything, but this is the second time I found a Cinderella Barbie doll at a thrift store today. Now here we are on the third floor, and it's mostly just chairs and tables. But man, look at this building. Classic. There was a little room in the back, with a lot of odds and ends. This looks like it was cute at one time, but not anymore. Just creepy. These pictures were so common, but for such a small time. Ah, uh, the good old days with antennas on phones. Wow, this is really old. And check out this inkwell. When you saw these chairs in a house, that was a warning that old people live there. What the? Yeah, if you got it though, you got it though. <laughs> Thank God these are not rocking chair toilets. <laughs> now the second floor was mostly lamps, coffee tables, end tables, and lots of old abandoned art. The other side of the second floor was old Christmas decorations, which I like. There isn't much to see up here, 
other than this. And another piano. I don't know what to say about this lamp. These used to be really popular for a short amount of time too. Remember when we used to frame sewn art? I know this is rotting in its own frame, but I kind of like the look of it. I remember everybody used to have these types of rugs. Didn't expect to find a saddle at a thrift shop. I thought they were custom made. See, I think a lot of this stuff is donated from families of deceased members. A 1951 company picture. I miss these stools. Everything in the 80s and early 90s had to be about palm trees and peaches, even with Disney. Apparently more things donated from the deceased. Apparently many were soldiers, because there are a lot of things a veteran would hold on to here. Things made a long time ago in America lasted for a long time, such as this bag. Now here's some of the things I got from the previous thrift shop and today's thrift store. A Nintendo 3DS, 3DS games such as Zelda, Mario Kart 7, Galaga and Pac-Man Remix. This still brand new Star Wars t-shirt from Disney. Shorts I got from Savers that I can mess up. And as I've shown in the previous video, this Star Wars book, which was the very first Star Wars book ever published. And because of my two jobs, lots of overtime, and 16 hours of classes on the weekend, it is taking me a lot more time to get a video edited and uploaded. So my next video should be a couple of weeks. And then after that, I should be fine. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the sudden surge in subscribers. If you like this video, click the like button below. And I'll see you next time.